How come the Leafs can never beat Buffalo and Gustafson sucks? But but they beat Buffalo last time and Gustafson got a shutout. Okay, I don't know if you're new to this, but you're supposed to just give me my space and let me be mad, okay? Ah, and then, yes, please, dude! What a great goal, dude! Crazy throwing waffles. Woo! Who are you? Optimus Prime. Leafs lose 3-2 in regulation to the Buffalo Sabres. And there are losses that frustrate you because the Leafs stink like that 7-0 ass kicking against Boston. Then there's games like this one where if you watch the whole thing you're like, really? You didn't get a point out of that at least? Shots were basically even, hits were basically even, face-offs were basically even, but I thought the Leafs controlled the pace of the game for the most part, didn't you? And sometimes you lose because of bad luck, sometimes you lose because you suck, and the opening five minutes was a little bit of uh, both. Luck is Matt Ellis just going meh, and it somehow goes in from behind the net. Suck is Gostad's goal on Gustafson. I don't care how many shutouts he's got recently, you have to stop those. So we looked at the luck, we looked at the suck, now the Leafs goals were good. Shen goes way wide of the net, but it was so wide that it looked intentional and it angles perfectly out front of Grabowski, he puts it in. And the second goal, you could argue it was suck on the Sabres part, Kuhlman just strips the puck, Grabowski uh, waits a little bit, dishes the crab, and it goes in. And after they tied it up, that game was for the Leafs to win, I thought. And they didn't really get too many quality scoring chances. And then Thomas Vanek's pass to Pominville just... And all of a sudden, the population of Pominville goes up 3-2, to two, and that's how the game ended. My Rick Jenneret still needs work. And the even worse thing about not even getting one point in a very winnable game like that is now you're going into your second game in as many nights and it's against the New York Rangers, the top team in the East. And it's extra key because if the Leafs lose against the Rangers in regulation and the Caps and Pens win their next game, all of a sudden the Leafs are out of a playoff spot. And the scary thing about that is you can't count on the Caps and Pens to suck. They have sucked, but I, don't you just feel like the Caps are a ticking time bomb? They shouldn't be anywhere close to this bad. And the Pens are so banged up, but they're gonna get better. And at any given point the next day, next week, next month, next year, they could just be like, hey, we have the best player in the world back. You know Sidney Crosby has only played eight games so far this season and he leads the league in points per game. 1.5 points per game. Claude Giroux in second with one point. Kessel's in there too, actually. He's sixth with 1.12. And what's happened to the Leafs over the last few years is they go on these amazing runs towards the end of the season and they just hope and pray that the teams above them screw up. For the time being, the Leafs were one of the teams that everyone hopes screws up. And the key there is don't screw up. Which is impossible, by the way, everyone who's going to get on the Leafs for this one game. But they got to minimize it. And one of the screw ups in this game, as great as Gustafson has been lately, he's won the Leafs a few games. You can't let in goals like Gostad's. Philly's fourth right now in the Eastern Conference, but they have 56 points. They could be first by the end of the season, but there is a reason why a lot of people are like, you know what, I wouldn't mind if my team played Philly in the first round. Because on a lot of nights, Brzgalov can't stop a beach ball. Well, you have to be Siv. And then you're counting on Bobrovsky, and he's been good, but is he gonna be, eh, uh. And speaking of the Flyers, since this is probably gonna be a short video, I want to address one thing. The rumors floating around that the Leafs are gonna trade Luke Shen for James Van Riemsdyk. One, it would be kind of funny, because Brian Burke was trying to get both Shens at one point, and after that trade, he'd be left with neither of them. And somehow Philly would have him. Two, I just, I don't know if Van Riemsdyk has shown enough to warrant the risk. Maybe Flyers fans can help me out with that. Put it this way, if Flyers fans are saying they'd take the trade, then I don't want it. And three, Burke loves players that will do anything for the team and anything for the community. And Luke Shen is arguably the biggest community player on the Leafs. He's got Luke's troops, he's always at community events, he's always signing autographs different places. Burke flew with him to Afghanistan when he still didn't have a contract to go talk to the troops and just be an ambassador. He loves players like that and he's always claimed to like players with Luke Shen's style and play. I, I just, I can't imagine him trading him away. Then again, how the hell did he get Phaneuf and Lupul? Burke's fun, I don't know, I like having him as a GM. I like not knowing what the hell is happening. Last winter, like last January, being a Leafs fan was like watching the last 15 minutes of The Departed. Oh man, that's how the movie's gonna, oh, oh, he got shot in the, oh man, oh, I can't believe that, what? What? No, but I don't understand. Why are the credits rolling? What I'm trying to say is Brian Burke is Mark Wahlberg without the rapping skills. Or maybe he does. I don't know. I've never seen him. So let that be the SteveDangle.com poll. Luke Shen for James Van Reems, like straight up. Who wins that trade? And I'll put the options to say it's a tie or I have no freaking clue. One last thing. I'm selling ad space on SteveDangle.com in two different places. So I'll put the link in the underbar there so you can bid if you'd like. It's on eBay. Some restrictions apply. And I also posted two blogs recently. One on SteveDangle.com and one on RealSports.ca. The one on my site is asking who won the Camilleri trade, by the way. That's some other big news. And the one on RealSports.ca 
I looked at all the all-stars, what they're making, who should have made it, who shouldn't have made it, and just why big contracts suck. All that in the underbar, and follow me on Twitter, add me on Facebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and vote on the SteveDangle.com poll. See you next time.